flattered astronomy, the heavens revealed. Mankind has sought to explain the heavens and earth for centuries. While the earth seems to be a fixed, motionless plane, any model or system must also explain the known movements of all the planets, the stars, the moon, the sun. If any proposed system can satisfy all three of these criteria, one, it must account for the lack of any movement of Earth. Two, it must explain all commonly observed heavenly motions. And three, and it matches biblical scripture exactly. Would it be more acceptable than the current model of unfathomable vastness and undetectable curve? In the time-observed astronomy, some agreed facts are, one, there are regular cycles of the heavenly bodies and we can predict with great accuracy their positions in the sky at any given time of year for any location on Earth. Two, all planets and the sun and moon travel within a few degrees of a narrow 18 degree band of the sky called the ecliptic that arcs over our heads parallel to the equator in an east-west direction. We're looking up at the sky here. We're always looking up at the sky. Venus and Mercury are the only planets that we see pass in front of the sun. That's number three. Number four, Mars comes seven times closer at its nearest to Earth as it does when it is on the furthest part of its journey through the heavens. Five, Venus comes nearly twice as close though. Six, Venus and Mercury are only seen just before sunrise in the east, at just around and after sunset in the west, never overhead like all of the other planets. Seven, the retrograde motions of all of the planets mean they aren't circling around us like the sun, as they would always cross the sky east to west and never reverse this direction traveling eastwards for some time as we often observe. Eight, the sun and the moon do not have retrograde cycles. They cross the sky in the same direction all the time, rising in the east, setting in the west entirely predictably throughout the year and sometimes crossing paths. Nine, the constellations or fixed stars, including the zodiac signs, also seem to arc over us from the east, never changing, except for appearing slightly further west each night as the sun goes down and reveals their brilliance. The planets and sun move against this background. We say the sun is in Pisces, the moon is in Scorpio, and so on and so on. Ten, Aristotle, Aristarchus, Ptolemy, Brahe, Copernicus, Kepler, Galileo, and many more have all suggested different models of the earth and heavens. What if there was a system that combined all of the above described planetary motions together with our being on a fixed plane earth? From simple everyday observations, the sun goes overhead east to west 
giving us light and heat, day and night, and the seasons as it moves north and south between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn through the year. The sun, moon, and stars constantly travel overhead from east to west. Everything that sets in the west immediately rises again in the east. The stars rotate around the north-south pole axis, which is why we get anti-clockwise star motion facing north and clockwise star motion facing south. And also why they travel straight overhead east to west at the equator. Here's the top-down view with Earth magnified. The entire heavens rise in the east and travel west. The stars rotate over the Earth every 23 hours 56 minutes, thus shifting westward slightly every sundown, changing the constellations for everyone as we go through the seasons. After one solar year, the stars have shifted by 24 hours and they are back where they started. But is it the sky that's moving or is it the earth? The current model accepted by governments and taught by academia is that the Earth is a spinning globe. The alternative is the stars are moving and the Earth is still, exactly as we view and we experience with our everyday senses. But how do the planets fit in with this view? The traditional Copernican solar system has the sun in the center and everything revolves around the sun in slightly elliptical orbits. It is also assumed that we are looking top down at the planetary system here. But if we see this as a cross section looking north across the plane of it and swap the earth for where the sun is, all the planets still go around the sun, but the sun arcs over the fixed earth with the planetary system in tow. I would call them luminaries instead of planets, really. Or wandering stars. Turn the solar system on its side and put it above your head, following the sun's daily motion from east to west along the ecliptic.
The earth is not moving. The entire heavens are. While the sun is showing its daily motion, the planets or luminaries are showing their annual paths around the sun. Their positions relative to it only change gradually each day depending on their orbital distances. Retrograde motion explained without ellipses or epic cyclists. All seven planets or luminaries cycle around the sun as the sun semicircles over the earth. The retrograde motions of the outer planets or luminaries the planets go round the sun as the sun arcs over the earth in a semicircle, but they all behave like this from our perspective. None of this came together by accident. Quote, he stretches out the north over the empty place and hangs the earth upon nothing. Job 26, 7. Cross-section view, looking north, earth is fixed in its position at the center of the infinite creator's awesome, elegant, perfect world. There are no ellipses here, only circles and straight lines. <laughs>